Can you reverse diabetes by ignoring the dietary guidelines that you get? That is what my guest claimed in a TEDx talk that has been seen over 600,000 times. And I'm here with Dr. Sarah Halberg. Sarah, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, as doctors, we've been told that diabetes is a chronic disease, mm -hmm. it tends to get worse, and you should eat less calories and less fat. But you don't agree with that. No, Why? I don't. Why? Well, diabetes is a chronic disease, and it's going to continue to get worse if you follow the guidelines. The guidelines, sadly put out by associations that are supposed to be advocates for people with diabetes. Look, eating carbohydrates causes your blood sugar to go up. Your blood sugar being elevated is what diabetes is. Okay, so if we want to solve the problem, we have to take away the cause. So when diabetics remove at least a lot of the carbohydrates from their diet, their blood sugars go, goes down, and then they're not diabetic any longer. I am very big on not using the word cured because to cure someone means it can't come back. But if someone with diabetes who has resolved their diabetes, which is the term I prefer to use, eats carbohydrates again, it will come back. But the fact of the matter is, going back to your original question, it doesn't have to be a chronic disease. We can intervene here, resolve the problems just by changing someone's nutrition. And that, that sounds incredible. I actually know that it's, it's working very well for lots of people, but why don't everybody get that sort of advice? Boy, the million dollar question, right? And I think that the tides are turning. I am so optimistic that treatment of diabetes is going to be revolutionized over the next five to 10 years. Because again, what we see is a grassroots movement. Diabetics don't want to be told that they're going to be sick for the rest of their life. And the argument people give is that no one's going to follow that diet. But wait a minute. You told someone that they have a chronic progressive disease that they will die from. But before they die, they may go blind. They may have to go on dialysis. They may lose their limbs. And you don't think that that's motivating enough for people to want to change? Because I argue it is. And what we have done is not given people a chance. Exactly. Because... You, you would think that that sort of life you know, changing decision would be up to the person and not to the doctors. It feels like very sort of paternalistic sort of view of the world where the doctor takes the, that decision away from the person who's affected by it, right? Absolutely, right. And they say that people can't change. And so that's just, again, making the decision. They've made the decision before even presenting the options, right? They can't change. They wouldn't be able to stick with a low-carbohydrate diet. Therefore, I'm not going to give them the opportunity to learn about that. Well, people are getting smart, and the Internet and programs like yours are helping people by allowing them to understand that there is a solution. And it doesn't mean you just have to take more and more medicine. It doesn't mean that you have to you know, face a life with all of these comorbidities along with diabetes in your future, and you can take charge of it. And people, once they understand that and they get themselves educated, they do want to change. They want to live a more productive and healthier life. They want to feel better. Right. So you're a doctor. You treat diabetics with this sort of advice, right? Mm -hmm. well, do you see anybody who can stick to it long term? Oh, yeah, definitely. Can I mean, you share any story? Absolutely. I mean, we have so many stories of wonderful changes that we, uh, I could share. But, I mean, people say that they can't stick with it. But I have been using this treatment for diabetics for three years. And I have plenty of my first patients that I still see regularly in my clinic. So I can tell you right now that that's not true. And people come in and they say, I mean, I couldn't even imagine. They take a look at a piece of bread and they say, I can't even now fathom that that used to be something that I might reach for. They really do have this switch that flips in them. And it flips for many reasons. Number one, I think one of the first keys to actually having this switch flip where they are going to do this as a lifestyle is educating them. So you're not just telling them what to eat, 
you're helping them understand why. Then they begin to do it, and all of a sudden, they start to feel better. Their energy is better. I mean, they get up and say, I didn't hurt as much as I used to. I haven't felt this good in 20 years. Most of our diabetics are overweight. They're losing weight. That's motivating. Let's face it. And then the other thing is all of a sudden they don't have to take all their medications. And that's not only a nuisance, but that's a big saving for their pocketbook. All these things together will tell us that, yes, people can stay with it. I mean, once we get someone off of 200 units of insulin, I mean, they don't want to go back to that. They don't want to go back to that. And it's motivating every day to understand where they came from and where they are now. Right. So if someone with diabetes is watching now, uh, could you share some, some ideas about how do you, how do you get started? What, what kind of resources would you recommend to people, books, uh, you know, programs, whatever? Where, where, where should people start? Well, I think opinion? a very important thing, if you have diabetes, you probably do need to work with a physician. Because one of the things that is most important um, in my job is that I help patients decrease their diabetes medications. If you're not working with a physician, that can be very dangerous because people can get very low blood sugars. So, so they, they need to reduce their medications. medication doses, right. mm -hmm. like insulin. So they need to find someone who's going to help them do that. And I think more and more we are finding more physicians willing to do this with patients. So I think that's probably first key. And then the second key is reducing the carbohydrates in their diet. Um, so realizing that we don't need refined uh, carbohydrates, I find the simplest way to explain that to patients is through GPS. That's what I always tell patients. GPS? No grains, no potatoes, and no sugar. Uh -huh. It's a simple way GPS, huh? to tell everybody what they need to be avoiding. They can take a look at any food and say, is there a GPS in there? And if there is, I'm not going to eat it. If there's not, it's probably something that's going to be reasonable for me. And then the next thing is getting over the fear of fat. And for a lot of people, this is actually the biggest struggle. What do you mean eating fat? That is probably the single most common question that I get. Yeah, okay. What does it mean to eat fat? <laughs> and it just really goes what to show you, right? Well, what does it mean to eat fat? It means, for example, let's take vegetables. I always put vegetables at the top of the list. When people tell me, how do I get more fat? People say, how is vegetables at the top of your list? Well, because vegetables are a great way to get your fat in, right? All vegetables should come with fat. It's a rule in my clinic. If you eat a veggie, it comes with a fat. So like it's covered what? in butter. It's cooked in olive oil, right? Cream. I mean, why spinach? Have cream spinach, right? There you go. Um, if it's raw that you're eating it, fantastic. But dip it in something. There's just a ton of ways to increase the fat, even through something like vegetables. Heavy whipping cream. The other thing I always say in my clinic is every healthy kitchen has about six containers of that in their fridge, right? right. Sounds like my fridge. There you go. That's right. So heavy whipping cream, cream cheese, okay, coconut oil, cooking with coconut oil, not always having to get the more expensive, leaner cuts of meat. Have something with a little fat on it. So... Again, it's just getting people used to this idea. I mean, a lot of times in my clinic, I'll have to introduce people to the concept that heavy whipping cream comes in a carton because all they think of is the can. Uh -huh. And I always tell everyone, mm -hmm. Cool Whip does not count, right? They, they didn't even realize that some of these foods were out here. But again, they're so there. That's sort of the number one thing you said, uh, to eat more fat, how you do that. Uh, mm -hmm. You have any other tips and tricks that you find very useful for people in their sort of journey? As far as eating fat goes? Yeah, well, well as, far, as far as reversing diabetes goes. Yeah. Are there difficulties that are, that are common and, and ways to overcome them? Yes, I think probably one of the other ones is that people eat too much protein then. So again, the fear of fat often creates that scenario where what they'll do is they'll be cutting their carbs, they get that, but that fear of fat continues to creep in, and so what they wind up doing is having too much protein. And it depends on the length of time you've had diabetes, how severe it is, but many of our longer-standing diabetics, they'll have uh, glucose reactions even to a large protein load. So they have to be cautious of that. That would be one thing. And the other thing is boredom. So, mm -hmm. I mean, meat and cheese, okay? You know, That's meat good. and cheese is great. But if that's all you see as part of a well-formulated, low-carbohydrate diet, you'll get bored. 
So how That's do you get the variation? Huh? Boy, I mean, we use a lot of the wonderful websites that are out there for recipes. Um, and we encourage people to try new things. One of the foods that I always push on people is try hemp seeds. Hemp seeds, I, I always say everyone should have hemp seeds on almost anything. There's a great way to increase your fat. It increases fiber. And they're wonderful and tasty. And who's ever tried them before, right? You can use hemp seeds in so many different ways. You cook the shelled ones as rice. I mean, there's just the limits are endless, on, or the limitations are endless um, on what we can make that is delicious, has tons of variety, and can keep people happy, not for a week or a month or six months because that's a diet, right? Keep people happy and enjoying what they're eating for the rest of their life. So they've got to get out there and try new things. They think they can't ever have bread again, but have you made low-carb bread? Because it doesn't take three hours like our grain-based bread. You can make some delicious low-carb bread in 10 minutes. Maybe it's using ingredients you haven't heard of before. Maybe you're not quite sure where you get flax meal. But those are the kind of things that you need to find out so that you can experiment. Find a new repertoire, if you will of food, a rotation of recipes at your house that everybody can be happy with. Good, good kind of start Great. on this. So well, thank, thank you. you.